church is getting from behind Nobody can step ahead of you. Thank you, Lord. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. God bless your families. Good, good, good. See you again. Thank you for allowing me in your space. God is good. This is the day which the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm going to take this next few moments. It is uh, the end of Black History Month, and our youth department has uh, put something together for the next uh, eight to ten minutes. I'm going to just ask you to please enjoy their presentation. Uh, it's a blessing. I want to thank Anamika and the group for, for doing what they did. So for the next uh, eight minutes or so, please enjoy this tape. God bless you. I'll be back after the video. young people, LLM members, and ministers. For those who don't know me, my name is Anamika, and I am one of the youth leaders here at Light and Life Ministries under the leadership of our amazing pastor, John C. Taylor. Now, Black History Month is now coming to an end, and we want to do something a little bit different this year. You know, every year we highlight the amazing historians of time throughout our black history. We want to shout out all of our amazing advocates, those who paved the way and fought for freedom and human rights, those who are historians, those who are there are heroes, our inspiration, and trailblazers that made an impact over the years and that have walked this earth, that are no longer here. But we want to change that. We want to highlight black Canadians that are here making a difference now. Black Canadians that are breaking barriers and limitations that society has formed around us. You know, discrimination, racism, we are breaking limits this year. Black history has evolved over the years. And today we're just gonna highlight just a few to get to let you know that we are here to make history. If you haven't heard of Brandon Gomez, he is CP24's former reporter, and now he has his own TV news channel. That's pretty dope, right? There's Vanessa Anthony, Taylor Russell, Stefan James, who starred in the movie Selma, Kayla Gray, Jalen Nelson. There's so much more that we can list, but I just wanna let you know that change is here and you young people can be a part of that change. The change is inside of you. The giftings and the callings that God has on your life is inside of you and it's time for it to come out. If you are familiar with me, I'm big on affirmation and I would like for you all to repeat after me, young people. Say, I am history in the making. Yeah, say that again. I am history in the making. Now listen to the voices of some of our very own young people as they give insight of Black Canadians that are among us today. Hello everyone. Uh, happy Black History Month. Let's get this started. St. Fermin Monastein, born December 16th, 1909 and uh, passed away October 27th, 1977, was a Haitian Canadian politician and a medical doctor who was the first black Canadian elected mayor of a Canadian municipality. That was then, and here's what's happening now. Uh, meet Steve Anderson, breaking barriers and stigma growing up in the Jane and Finch community. He didn't make history once, but twice. In 2004, he became the first black lawyer hired in the TTC legal department. 
After moving to Shelburne, uh, Steve Anderson got acquainted with his new town, and in 2017, he made history yet again as the first black person to become a city councillor. Less than a year later, Mr. Anderson was elected as deputy mayor in 2018. Utilizing his platform, Steve pushed for change. He introduced the first ever anti-black racism and discrimination task force in the town of Shelburne, early 2020. I love the color of my skin, and you should too. Whoever's watching this, if you feel discouraged by the color of your skin, just try and love it as best as you can. And don't let anyone discourage you just for having a different skin tone, and don't agree with people who think otherwise. Uh, that concludes my presentation. I hope you liked it, and uh, yeah, have a nice day. Thank you so much, Jelani. Wow, Steve Anderson, not only did he make history once, but twice. That's pretty incredible and inspirational, right? And if he can do that, still being alive among us today and making change, then so can you, young people. It doesn't matter where you've grown up. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter where you come from. The mere fact that you're here and alive today goes to show that destiny awaits you, that you are history in the making. This is Alexandra Bastiani. She is Canada's first black female cardiologist. She completed her medical doctorate in 2011 at the University of Montreal. Three years later, she received an internal medical residency and continued on with an adult cardiology fellowship in 2018. She recently made history after successfully completing an interventional cardiology fellowship at the MAHI in Edmonton. Making the Faculty of Medicine's first Black valedictorian, Alexandra Bassini started working as a cardiologist at Thunder Bay Regional Health Center on July 13th, 2020. If Alexandra can do it, you can too. Wow, thank you so much, Hannah Marie, for that insight. Wow, Alexandra Bassiani, she is an incredible young person right here in Canada and breaking barriers, breaking limitations. To all the students right now pursuing their hopes and dreams in profession and finding it a hard time, understand this, that if she can do it and conquer and break limits, so can you. You are called to make a difference. One person I'd like to bring to your attention is by the name of Kevin Junor. Kevin Junor is an exceptional pillar in the Canadian Armed Forces for over 34 years. He participated in the celebration of Queen Elizabeth's mother 100th birthday and along with her funeral in the UK. Fast forward in 2011 as the Deputy Superintendent of Administration at the Ontario Correctional Institution located in Brampton, he was in charge of diversity advisory and brought change into the policies there that affected a lot of victims. Throughout his entire career devoted serving the community and the government, he is also a servant of God. Yes, a preacher indeed in his local church in Caledon. And not to mention, he's also my uncle. Last but certainly not the least, there is one amazing person that has impacted all of us that are watching today. He was born and raised in Jamaica, and he traveled all the way to Canada and made history. Our very own pastor, John C. Taylor. He made black history by impacting all of us with the word, allowing God to use him mightily as a force reckoned with here in Canada today. There's so many amazing professionals that grew up in this ministry, Light and Life Ministry. And if it wasn't for the only Pastor John C. Taylor, none of us would be here right now viewing Light and Life Ministries online media. And so we wanted to say thank you so much, Pastor, for paving the way that you have influenced all of us, our very own entrepreneurs. There are professionals, pastors, teachers, leaders, influencers, artists, singers, dancers, musicians, actors, and the list goes on that are established today, operating the power and the calling that God has placed inside of them for such a time as this, all because of you. And by the grace of the Almighty God that you will continue to thrive and that you will continue to push and make history. And just so you know, we do have amazing young entrepreneurs right here in our very local church, such as SAS Collections, Royal Messenger Apparel, Locks by Niche, Crown Care Beauty, JP Bundles Express, Omega Music Productions, Mikasa Glow, and the list goes on. This is just to name a few, guys. 
If you didn't decide to go and to travel, if you didn't decide to answer the call, our lives would be very different. I can guarantee that. We want to congratulate you, Pastor. We want to let you know that you are part of Black History and we love you. <laughs> All to encourage everyone that's here that's stumbling, contemplating of their hopes and dreams to pursue, that you are history in the making. Young people, it's our time. Gen Zs and Millennials, it's our time to shine. Black Canadians, you are enough. Now let's make history today. That session, can you hear me out there? I hope my mic is on. Amen. Can you praise the Lord if you can hear me clearly? Please put it in the chat if I am coming through to you live and clear. All right. Um, I hope that you did enjoy that clip. Let me again say thank you to the youth department and Anika. Thank you so much for um, the group that put it together. It's a blessing indeed. God bless you guys. Keep up the good work. Amen. You're getting better. <laughs> All right. So let me uh, go to the subject for tonight, continuing uh, in the uncertainty. Tonight's subject, I want to tie it in to close out Black History Month. I want to use this word to close out our Black History Month here in Canada. All right. Uh, subject is get used to yourself. Get used to yourself. In other, in other words, know yourself. St. John chapter 8 and verse 32 is where we'll begin reading from uh, the New King James Version of the Bible. It says here, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Moving on, Psalm 139, verse 14, it says here, I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. I will praise you, why? For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, talking David Talking to God, hallelujah. Telling God how we will praise him. <laughs> Telling God, I will praise you, Lord, because I, am, I know who I am. I accept the, who I am. I am happy with who I am. So I will praise you. Why? When he looked at himself, not that there weren't flaws, not there weren't that things to, you know, to look at and say, I wish that this was better. I wish that that was better. But when he comes to a conclusion, when he looked himself over and understand who he was, he says, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. Get used to yourself is my subject. End uncertainty. End uncertainty. Bless God. What does it mean to uh, get used to? It used to. According to Google, the phrase uh, get used to, if you, use, if, if you get used to something, if you get used to something or someone, you become familiar with it or with that person. Amen? You, get, you become familiar with it or to get to know them. So that why you no longer feel that the thing or person is unusual or surprising. You no longer feel that the person or the thing is unusual or surprising. Bless God. When you look at yourself, do you frighten your own self? Are you frightened of yourself? Are you afraid of yourself? Are you unhappy of yourself and if you're unhappy with yourself how can you possibly hope to make anybody else happy the bible said love 
begins with God. And then when you know the love of God, you love yourself first. And then you love somebody else. You, are, you, you have the, the power. Amen. You have what it takes to love other people. So if you don't love yourself, you can't love others and don't love yourself. You cannot put anyone above you. Let no one take that space in your life. Hallelujah. A husband must love his wife, the Bible says, as the Lord loved the church. But it is impossible for the husband to love his wife as the Lord loves the church and that person don't love themselves. Amen. For you to give you, if love, you have to have it. You cannot give what you don't have. So, so it is a tall order to ask someone to give of what they don't possess. <laughs> what, are we, what are we doing? Beating the stone? Trying to get blood, as my mother would say, out of stone? You don't have it. Man, you don't know how to love because you don't even love yourself. Amen. So, and when a person don't love themselves, what they do? They abuse themselves. They cut themselves. They do all kinds of things to themselves because why? They hate themselves. So I'm, 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 I'm trying to reach out to those of you this evening that are, are abusing yourself. To stop abusing yourself, get used to yourself. You would be surprised. You would have peace like never before. You would be able to sleep like never before. A lot of sleep up, when you're deprived from sleep, it's because you hate yourself. When you come out of the shower and you look at yourself, you say, I can't stand looking at these things. And for some people, it's a long time that they have not stand naked <laughs> in front of the mirror because they don't like what's looking back at them. How then are you going to love someone else when you doesn't have the capacity to love your own self. Move on, Pastor Taylor. So the question is, why do you do the things you do? What is <laughs> influencing you not to like yourself? What or who is influencing you not to like yourself? There got to be a what or and who. They have to be an influencer. Something or someone is triggering that thought in you. Why you don't like yourself. Back uh, uh, in my mother's days, back in my mother's days when I was growing up, um, if a woman was heavy set, if I use the word fat, everybody's going to kill me. Amen? But back then, if a woman was skinny, they called them bones. Because why? A woman back then, uh, 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 in order for her to look beautiful, you have to have some some meat on. Amen. You got to have some flesh on. Ha, remember, it, it's kind of funny how things just evolved over the years. Uh, social media, um, advertisement, because they ad advertise cars with skinny girls. They advertise cigarettes and uh, beer and liquor, al alcohol, and all these things. It's with these uh, uh, skinny girls, and and so they set an uh, image in, in, in the minds of women that in order for you to be beautiful, you have to be skinny bones. Back in those days, uh, I used to hear the guys would call a skinny girl bones, amen, and they, and they would look at someone that is, my God, help me not to get in trouble tonight, Jesus. You know what happened? I'm in enough trouble as it, as, as it were already so <laughs> uh, Jesus you voluptuous woman <laughs> I'm trying to be so political correct you don't even understand Amen. all kinds of words good. So I'm trying to see something that can make a, a woman who don't like herself feel good to know that hey where you are right now that you don't like yourself you have bought into style and fashion you have bought into style and fashion. So because now you put on some weight, hallelujah, and, 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 and society says, oh, you need to be skinny to be healthy. You, you, you get it? Get used to yourself. Get used to yourself. Stop 
the uncertainty. Uh, 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 uh. Your body mass index, index is not you. That's, that's, that's not all who you are. Amen. It's not your size that makes you who you are in God's sight. Come on, somebody here. You are more, hallelujah, than 500 pounds person. You are more than a 80 pound person. Come on. You have a bigger heart inside of you. So try to get used to yourself. Listen to Pastor Taylor here carefully here. Who or what is influencing? What are, what, what, what are some of the drivers, hallelujah, behind your decision that you have made not to like yourself? Run the track fast, Pastor. From the book of Genesis chapter 3, we're going to read about seven verses there, long read, but it gives substance to my subject. It gives substance to my subject. Genesis chapter 3 uh, verse number one, it says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Art God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but, verse three said, Of the fruit of the trees, of the tree rather, which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Uh, I, I, I hear the old King James, for in the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. I'll just, somehow I just love old King James Version. Watch this now. Then listen to the devil now. Verse n n n number four. He says, the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. You will not surely die. For God knows, very important verse, verse 5. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Listen to the subject again. Get used to yourself. Get used to yourself. The Bible says in verse 6, So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Verse 7, then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves covering. They sewed fig leaves together and made themselves covering. So what, listen, what is causing you not to like yourself? What is causing you to get to the place where you become so self-sabotaged? Why are you sabotaging yourself? Who told you that you are not who God says you are? Who told you so? Who told you that you were ugly? Who told you so? Why do you want to be like someone else and not yourself? Why do you want to be like someone else and not yourself? Come on, I hear a lot of people, that's not me, I know, hello, it happened to your mama. Watch this scripture that we just read a while ago. It started with your mama. It's in your genes. It's in your DNA. You have Eve's blood run inside your veins. Amen. There are certain traits that have passed down. Amen. That we need to get deliverance from. Glory be to God. And so if you do, if you do not understand that inside of you, there is some self-hatred. There is some things inside of you that you do not like about yourself. And listen to me. You are game. Listen, I said, you are game for any product that people will put on the market to tell you that this will make you look better and this will make you look clearer. <laughs> whatever bleach they put out there, whatever vitamins they put out there and claim, oh, you're not going to like me too much tonight. We're closing out Black History Month. Praise God. And claim that it will make you better. Hey, Hey, you go sabotaging your body by putting all this crap in your body, unproven by science. Amen. Unproven by doctors. And you're putting these things in your body, talking about they are natural 
uh, remedies with natural ingredients. Says who? I could go pick some bushes in my backyard in the next few weeks. Praise God. Thank God. February done. God, Jesus. Woo. Glory. I get, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me get back to what I'm saying. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hey, hey. I got sunshine on a cloudy day. May is coming, Jesus. Mm-hmm. 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 All right. Let's, let's, let's get rid of it. Pastor Taylor, remain focused. Okay. I, I am so focused. You wouldn't even know how focused I am. Hey, God Almighty. I can see clearly now. The snow is gone. Woo. I, I'm so focused. You don't even understand. Hallelujah. Jesus. Come on. Can you just clap your hands in the Lord and say from here on it's just going to get better. It's going to get better for you. It's going to get better for you. All right. I know I had you serious a while ago. But I'm, I'm, I don't want to preach to a church that is so stone-faced. I want you to enjoy God's word. I mean, I want you to enjoy the word of the Lord. For, all right? <clears throat> Why do you want to be like someone else and not yourself? Why are you believing a lie? Listen to the lie. Genesis 3, 5. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, of the tree, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Why do you want to change from yourself to become someone else? Why do you want to change from yourself to become someone else? Get used to yourself. Hallelujah. Come on, hand the uncertainty. God, remember this, that some change or changes are permanent. Some things that you have done to yourself, they are permanent. Some things that some people are doing to their bodies, whatever you're doing to your bodies, it is permanent. Here the Lord says in Romans uh, uh, 12, 1 and 2. I know you don't have it in the, in, in, in the script that I gave you. But it says, present your bodies. Hallelujah. As living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God. For this is your reasonable service. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not reasonable for you to go with all the trends that are out there. That people are claiming to make you better, look better feel better, and they have no scientific data. Stop running around and pumping foolishness in your body. Some damages that you're doing to yourself is permanent. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Stop it. Why do you hate yourself so bad? Why? I, I, I know... Lots of people not going to want to hear this word, but that's not for me to decide. <laughs> that's for you to know the truth. And when you know the truth, it's my job to preach the truth. And when you hear it, the Bible said some will hear and some will forbear. I pray that those who are on a suicide mission and doesn't even know it, you are poisoning yourself. You are causing lasting or permanent damage to your body and you don't even know it. I pray tonight by the power of the Almighty God you will be delivered, hallelujah, from self-sabotage. Watch this here. Be careful, ladies and gentlemen, who you are allowing to inform your values. Be careful. Whom you have shaping your beliefs. Whom you have shaping your standards. Those are values. That's what the word values mean. Your ethics. You know what I'm saying to you? Be careful of whom you have in your life. Because some people become rude. They became rude. And they weren't rude before until they start hanging out with certain people. Yeah. Yeah. Because those are the people now that, that informs their values. 
And when you never used to cuss bad word or, or talk to your mother so rudely until you hang out with some kids that had no have no respect for their parents, for their mothers. So now you come home and you want to talk to your mother the way that you hear those people, other friends, talk to their mother. Because why? They are the ones that you don't even know it was shaping your values. They were shaping your standard, your belief, your ethics. Mm -hmm. uh, glory be to God. Come on. Nice girl. Nice young man who, who was so honorable a while ago. All of a sudden, because who he or she's hanging out, start calling their mothers the B word. My God Almighty. Where do you get these things from? Who is informing your values? Ooh. What is shaping your standards? How do you, did you fall off track so bad? You got derailed. There are people whom you allow in your life who have a, an agenda to destroy you because they don't like where you are they see where you are. You are better in a better position than them. So they want you to become just like them. You got to be careful who you are allowing in this season. In this year of crazy miracles. You got to be careful who you are allowing to block your miracles. Some of you are not going to get no miracles because you know why? Someone is informing you not to believe God's word. Not to stand on the word of Almighty God. Please, please, pretty please. Just hear me out tonight in Jesus' name. Well, come on now. <laughs> uh, 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 some changes are permanent. Some things that you are doing to yourself. I don't know why I'm writing that. Somebody need to hear it. Some things that you are doing to yourself are permanent. Glory be to God. Permanent. It cannot be reversed. You're going to have to live with the consequences of your decision that you're making now. You will have the, the recompense tomorrow. It feels good now. But if it feels good, go ahead and do it. But be careful. Just remember who tells you so. Because in order for you to be doing what you're doing, it has to be promoted by somebody. You did not just get out of your house, amen, and go out and buy some crap to put in your bodies. And this is the reason why they says you got to be careful when you watch television at late night. Because it's in the late in the night that people eat more ice cream and eat. Uh, come on, you go raid the fridge at the time that you're not supposed to be eating. That's the time you feel for a snack. Why? The advertisement, the pizza, and all of these things come driving at you. Here's the, the hamburger. Here's the fries. You did not feel for those things. You just had a cup of tea, went to bed, your stomach was settled, and you feel good. Here you turn on this sad movie. And in order for you to feel good, you got to be munching on something. You, see, you, you went to the cupboard, you take out a bottle of, uh, no, no, here is where I stuck now, liquor. I don't know the different names. And, and, and you pour some in a glass and you start to sip. And all of a sudden that, uh, you get this high and then this drop. Because why? When you drink that liquor, it, 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 it sends you to sleep, but you found out that you wake up half an hour, one hour later, and you cannot go back to sleep. Don't you get it? Why do you hate yourself so bad? Why? Do you think that liquor put you to bed? No, it put you to bed for an hour or so. And then when that feeling, I study, eh? Yes, I do. When that feeling wears off, then you are wide awake and you can't go back to sleep. It is a hopper. And a big downer. Mm -hmm. And I get that from scientific. Not what my friends told me. Yeah. Because you're putting stuff in your body. You have liquor in your room. You have, you have a little fridge in your room. That you just pull out a beer. And you get your. Uh, God I don't even remember no liquor. I don't please. But you know what I'm saying. God is good. God is good. Why do you choose to die when you can live? Verse 4 of 
verse 3 and 4 of Genesis chapter 3 says, One of the uh, fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, You shall not eat, or you, sh or, or you shall not touch it, lest you die. The serpent says in verse 4, You will not surely die. Here's a question. Whose voice are you listening to? Whose voice are you listening to? I, I, do you see a dichotomy here? Do you see some confusion right here? Do you see now? Because God told uh, Adam, and Eve, Adam, Eve told Adam, do not eat from this tree. It is set apart. The day we eat of it, we're going to die. Eve rehearsed that same word to the serpent. The serpent now told her that's not true because God knows that the day you eat of it, you're going to be wise. Your eyes are going to open and you're going to be like God. <laughs> Who are you allowing to inform your values? Who are you subscribing to for answers? Bless God Almighty. You want to know answers about Certain things, buying a house, how are you going to subscribe to someone who never bought a home? Come on, friends. Isn't that common sense? You don't need to be no rocket science. How are you going to subscribe? Sometimes the person that you go to in the bank for the loan, he or she herself doesn't even own a home. So they give you some foolish <coughs> suggestions. If you go to someone with a, who own a home and have a mortgage on the house, they will be able to inform you better. So you must always do your research. Bless God. Do your research. It is important for you to do your research before you go uh, uh, open up yourself to certain people. You can't help me. You're gathering information for me to even use it and build yourself while you left me poor. Because when I speak to you, you recognize, oh, this person's onto something. They have an idea. I didn't have that. Let me grab the idea and run with it. Oh, come on, somebody. Why do you keep on forfeiting the purpose of your life for the accommodation of someone else's agenda of degradation? What is their agenda? An agenda of degradation. Amen. How come? You are so willing to give up your position of prosperity in exchange for the low state of poverty. How comes you want to move from your, your position of prosperity? You know why you, are, you, you will be so willing to uh, move from the standard that you set for yourself and to go down, hallelujah, to the dirt, in the dirt in some relationships? Because why? You haven't gotten used to yourself. You don't even know who you are. That's why you will date some guys that you dated. That's why you will sleep with some crofts that you sleep with. Because why? You, don't, you haven't gotten used to yourself. You need to back up here. Come on, it's the end of Black History Month. Hallelujah. Come on, let me deal with this. You need to back up and start to look within yourself and say, I'm better than that. I, come on now. Hello, hello. They, 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 they don't speak to your values. They don't speak to the things that you hold dearly. You cannot have a conversation with them. And they, you know, trigger any creativity inside of you. They rob you of substance. And when you have people in your life that robs you of substance, it tells you that's an agenda of the <laughs> degradation. An agenda of degradation. Oh, what is degradation, pastor? The word degradation simply means ruin. It means being a squalor. It speaks of poverty. It speaks of filth. <laughs> Dilapidation. It speaks of shame and disgrace. Just to name a few. After you end that relationship, you feel ashamed. You feel embarrassed. How could I ever sleep with that? Because why? You did not get used to yourself. You weren't connected to whom you are. Watch this. Hallelujah. Watch this. Some people's agenda is to bring you into 
shame and disgrace, degradation. Watch. <laughs> For a person like Eve, listen to me, to be so high and choose to stoop so low. It's telling you, ladies and gentlemen, in case you've never seen it, it's telling you that that person is not in tune with his or her self. You're not in tune. You're not, let me use another word. You're not in touch with yourself. It is time for you to get to know yourself. Get to know you. Get to know who you are. End the confusion. Do not bleach your skin to try to fit in. Love the skin that you're in. Come on now. Come, yeah, it's black history month. You don't need to bleach your skin to try to fit in. Love the skin that you're in. David says, verse 14 of Psalm 139. I read it before. Let me read it again in your ears. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. Get used to yourself, brothers and sisters. End the uncertainty. You see, I do not know how old Adam was, or how old Eve was. I, I, I really don't know their age when they fell. I, I, I haven't got around to that yet, but let me um, just leave this out there. Just in case there's a smart person out there. And I, I, I don't mean that, you know, in any way to put you down. In case there's someone out there who uh, knows from Scripture the age that Adam was when he fell or the age that Eve was when <coughs> both of them fell, I would love you, please advise. But if you're going to advise, please use Scripture to back it up. So I'm leaving that out there because I don't know everything. I really do not know everything. And I'm ready to learn. I'm ready to um, be instructed. Yes, sir. And, and not because I teach. I need also to be taught. So if there's someone out there who can show me from Scripture where, how old Eve was, amen, then please advise. I would really love that. And, and I'm not saying that you know, to make anyone feel like he's just kidding. No, I am serious. Back to the point. What I do want you to do, what I do know rather from scripture, is that Adam lived for 930 years. Adam lived for what? 930 years and died. Genesis 5 and verse 5, not going to read it. Nothing is mention of Eve. I don't know when Eve died. So if you also know from scripture when Eve died, I'm also asking you to please advise. All right? Adam lived 930 years and died. Nothing mentioned of Eve. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of speculations, a lot of speculations on, on Google, amen, on these search engines, but there is no evidence. And if there are no evidence, I can't run with it. If there are no scriptures to back up what people are saying, I'm sorry. I can't stand on that foundation because I need scriptures. I'm a preacher. All right? I'm a preacher. I'm not a doctor. I am not a, a scientist. I'm a preacher. So whatever I'm doing, I have to have the word of God to stand on. Or else I am on my own. However, the point that I am seeking to make is... Whatever age Eve was at the time of the fall, it is obvious that, she, Lord Jesus, that she did not took the time to get around to get used to herself. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? She did not spend enough time getting to know herself. <laughs> My God. I know I can't go far with this. He did not spend enough time. And do, do you know the people that are 
gullible, the people that are susceptible to these kind of trickeries, that anybody just can come and just uh, oppose something at them and they quickly just bought into it. Amen. Anybody can pitch something to them and they just, it's kind of funny. Everything that people are pitching nowadays, church people are the first one to just gobble it up. All these little phony Ponzi schemes, they bring it into the church because they know where. The most gullible people are in the church. My God Almighty, it's time for ignorance to get out of the house of God. Get out of the body of Christ. My God, why is it that when people have their little thing to pitch, they bring it to churches. They, 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 uh, come on. They strategically, that's the word I'm looking for. They strategically target church people. Why? Why? How can you be sitting on the teaching and you are so gullible? Come on, church. How can you have the word of God and you are so gullible? If you know Jesus, you are wise. How can any little boy just come and pick you up? Come on now. How come you're so easy to sell out your standards, your core values? Whew. Eve did not take enough time. I got to run from this point to get used to herself. I'm using the word used to yourself. Get used because everybody knows the word get to know yourself. No. This is get used to yourself. Amen? Watch this. Watch this. She did not get used because why? Why, why, is it, why do you say that, Pastor? Because she jumps at the opportunity when presented, hallelujah, to take on someone else's identity. Let me repeat. The reason why I says Eve did not get used to herself when the devil, or the serpent rather, presented the opportunity that if you eat, you, you shall not surely die. For God knows that in the day that you eat of this fruit, your eyes will be open and you will know, you will become like God, no good and evil. He, the Bible, verse, verse 6, verse 7, so when she looked, uh, verse 8, when she looked at the tree, she saw it was pleasant to the eyes. A, a tree good for fruit and to make one wise. The Bible says she took of the tr fruit and she ate it. She ate it, meaning that why? If she was comfortable in her skin, if she was comfortable with who she was, there is no way someone could pitch somebody else's identity to you and you want to change from who you are to become someone else. You are having an internal deficit. You are struggling from internal deficit. There's an emptiness inside of you. Come on now. For you, for Eve to want to be like God of whom she was already. Like God. Fearfully and wonderfully made. But as soon as the serpent pitches the, 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 the offers to her, Jesus Christ, she grabs it. If she was happy with who she was, there would be no sin in the world today. The reason why so many things are in chaos, some people want to be like other people. It's time to drive these plastic surgeons out of business. Hallelujah. Who's trying to create new nose and new lips and new this. And uh, 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 those who hate black people's lips are trying to put in false lips to get big lips. But yet they cost the black people's lips. You got to see that something is wrong with this picture. Love the skin you're in. Love who you are. Get used to yourself. Come on. Don't bleach your skin to become like somebody else. Don't put this foolishness in your body, but you want to lose weight. Go exercise and eat properly. That's all you got to do. Go exercise. Look in my eyes. Go exercise. Walk. Change your diet. That's all you got to do. 
No pills can make you slim. No herbal mixtures can make you slim. Discipline will do it. Discipline will do it. Repeat again. Discipline put in the work and you will get the result. Put in the work and you will get results. That's how God set up this world. Put in work and you will get results. I know God. <laughs> this is not one of those like messages. You ain't going to get much likes for this kind of message here tonight. In the name of Jesus, I'm coming down. <laughs> Why is it that Eve wanted to take on someone else's identity? It's because she was not happy with her own image. She was not happy with her own identity. And so when certain people are doing things right now, they want to sound like somebody else. Let me tell you something. I am me. I am an original. I am original. I love who I am. Watch this here. <laughs> oh God. He was already made in the image of God. Come on, get used to yourself. Hallelujah. Are you trying to be like someone else and in the process lose yourself? Are you trying to be like someone else and in the process you're losing yourself? You are God's best. And that's the way you should see yourself. If you were born with no hands, you are still God's best. If you were born with no feet, you are still God's best. Hallelujah. Come on, if you were born uh, with no speech or slow of speech like Moses, you are still God's best. You are created to do something. You were what? Come on. You were created to do something. You were created to do something. Revelation chapter 4 verse 11. And I'm coming down. Revelation 4 verse 11 from King James Version, please. It doesn't matter. It says here, up in heaven, you and thou art worthy, O oh Lord. They, they, you know the song that they made of it. Thou art worthy. Thou art worthy. Thou art worthy, O oh Lord. To receive glory. Powerful song. Glory and honor. All right. I just say, so here is the verse. Thou art worthy, O oh Lord. To receive glory and honor and power. For thou art created. All things, even me. Hallelujah. Why I come back to me. And for thy pleasure. I love that word. Don't forget that word. And for thy pleasure. They are they are and were created. The man without feet is created for God's pleasure. The man without hands, born without hands, are created for God's pleasure. Hey, the man slow of speech was born to do something. I speak to you out there tonight. Do something. Come on now. I was born with nine fingers, not ten. Glory be to God. That means I'm not normal. <laughs> but you know what's so sad? That's a tragedy to lose a, a a member of your body. It's a tragedy. But a greater tragedy yet. I, I heard. Uh, what is his name? Oh God. <coughs> I like to cite people. Mm. It's one of those old. Uh, uh, heroes of the faith. God will bring back his name to me. I heard him say. His name will call. T.L. Osborne. Thank you Holy Ghost. I like to cite people's quote. When I know where it comes from. If I don't know, I'm sorry. <laughs> you see? All right. T.L. Osborne says, The greater tragedy is for you to be normal. You have all ten fingers. You have all <laughs> your faculties in place. But you are not available for God to use you. Out of my nine fingers... I get on the keyboard and I said, Thou art worthy. Thou art worthy. Thou art worthy, O oh Lord. To receive.
receive glory glory and honor glory and honor and power hallelujah come on now for thou art created come on now you see what I'm saying I don't have ten fingers not normal but you are normal. You have all ten. What is God getting out of your life? I struggle with speech impediment. But yet, I'm an oracle for Jesus Christ. I'm God's mouthpiece. You that have fluent speech, are you available? For God to use you? <laughs> yeah, you are worthy. Thou art worthy. Thou art worthy, O oh God. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. I, just, I just feel like worshiping. To receive glory. <laughs> It's a tragedy for you to be so smart. You went to university. You graduated from college. You have all the degrees. And yet, God can't find you. You're not available. But you curse the person. Mm. Whom don't have everything in your sight, but yet they give back what they have to God. They give God pleasure. Lord, take the pleasures that I bring to you. I'm not the best player, God, but Father, whatever I play to you, let it be sweet sound. When I pray to you with my heavy tongue, let it come up a sweet sound. When I praise you, the fruits of my lips, let it be aroma in your nostrils, O oh God. Jesus, you have created everything for your pleasure. You did not make a mistake when I was born this way. You did it to see if I would overcome. Hallelujah. And the cap to give you glory. I'm grateful to you, God. While others say you can't, something inside of me says, I can do all things through Christ. Ephesians 3 and verse 20 come to me and says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that you can ask or think. I got to close here. God, I wish you could hear this other part that I have coming up. According to the power that works in me. I'm doing this not because of my ability, but because of him who availed me the power to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, there are those of you that are saved, you're born again, but there are areas in your life that you need to get saved. A lot of us believe that because you are saved, you're all saved. It's not because you're saved, you're saved from sin, but it does not mean that because you're saved from sin, you're saved from negativism. Not because you're saved from sin, you're saved from self-hatred. All of those areas that you need to get into the word of God to bring the hatred for yourself and get saved from it, get delivered from it. Negativism, you need to get saved from negativism. Poverty, you need to get saved from poverty. You know what I'm saying to you? Fear, you need to get saved from fear. Your soul Hallelujah. 
is washed in the blood, but your mind need to get deliverance. Why? Aren't you used to yourself by now? You need deliverance from self-hatred. And as I pray tonight, I got to stop. I pray. It's a tragedy, says T.L. TL Asburn, for you to be normal, and yet God can't use you. You're not being used for God. I am not normal. <laughs> no, and God did not make me normal. <laughs> Come on now. I am above and not beneath. If God can take something that people say cannot work and use it, then who should I give the glory? Whom should I ascribe honor? Whom should I ascribe praise? Now, those of you out there tonight, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that, uh, that as you digest this word, you will look into yourself and say, what am I doing for Jesus? What am I really, really doing for Jesus. You have both hands. You have all fingers. You have a good grasp on the English language. You, you know a lot of things. You're very smart. You are uh, uh, you, your oratorical skills. I know the word. Your oratorical skills are next to none. But yet, you're silent. May the almighty God have mercy upon you tonight. May God have mercy upon you. May you search yourself tonight and say, Father, if you can do it with Pastor Taylor, I surrender. I surrender my life to you. I surrender my hands to you. I surrender my mouth to you. I surrender my mind to you. I surrender all that I am to you. He surrendered to you, God. And look what you're doing through him. Thousands of souls got saved. As, as the young people put on the chat, businesses rise up through the vessel that was not in man's sight made perfect, but in God's sight, perfect. Tonight I pray healing where you're hurting. All these prayer requests that came in, I speak over every one of them that in the mighty name of Jesus, the word of God said he will perfect what concerns you. I pray your strength for this week. I pray that you will surrender. You'll go to that song. Don't have the time. All to Jesus, I surrender. All to him, I freely bring. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. May you surrender tonight. May you give it all to Jesus. And may you say, God, if you're looking for someone to use, you can use me. God bless you. God bless you from the bottom of my heart. May you surrender. In Jesus' name, shalom.